All right, everybody, welcome to the Ridgeline Hunting Podcast. I am your host, David Crane, and I am joined with Mike Peterson, who has become like a another host of the show here. Um, the host. <laughs> so intern, he, <laughs> intern Mike. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we're actually going to talk about our early archery elk hunt. Um, it was an awesome hunt, number one. I mean, we had a great time. Yeah. Uh, spoiler alert, no elk were harmed in this hunt, <laughs> but, uh, you know, we, we tried our best and, um, before we actually get into it, we're going to actually hear from one of our sponsors. Hey everybody, if you are looking for a game call that is elk, turkey, deer, predator calls, waterfowl calls, we highly recommend philpsgamecalls.com professional grade game calls made for every hunter that's right everybody phelps game calls we can't actually hear anything because uh, we don't have our headsets yeah. on but yes phelps game calls.com check them out um they were the call of choice anytime we hit the woods but definitely during elk season that's our go-to um yeah yeah that's all i use is is phelps so and and they work and they're proven and they worked for us definitely oh yeah we mainly use the um, the easy sucker most of the like i'd say a good majority of the time yeah so it wasn't really my goal but it was kind of like in my mind that i really wanted to call something in with the easy sucker just to show like hey man this this easy to use call can can get it done which it almost did yeah within like two hours of even hunting yeah we were we called them in and on on like two days we kind of used it to call in some stuff yeah so leading into the elk season and this started actually last year our plan was to hit a certain area and, and hunt that area uh, last year it got boogered up. Um, we here in the Pacific Northwest during the summertime, there's fires and all these other things that are happening constantly uh, during the summer. And I don't really remember a bunch of fires uh, growing up as a kid. I, I'm not sure what changed. I don't know if they're not clearing the underbrush. I have no idea, but it seems like now there's been a heck of a lot more fires. And last year, the area that we were going to elk hunt closed. So we couldn't hunt that area this year. It was a mild summer. We actually didn't have anything really over 95, which is kind of weird. We usually have like a week or two, uh, during August where it's just crazy hot, like yeah. 98 plus to like 104. And um, I think what helped us out, we had an actual like little rain spurt. Yeah. Leading like up like three to, or four days of rain leading up to the season. Yeah. Yeah, which really helped because uh, in other states, the areas that this this tree timber company, so we're hunting a, a timber area, um, they closed down um, Northern California and Oregon to these other places. But for Washington State, it was open. So we were just like, yes, finally we get to hunt this spot. So usually I would hunt that area um, late season. So during... Uh, late november early december i'm usually hunting those areas and i was on elk every single day and that actually didn't change when i when mike actually joined me for the hunt so um i i went opening weekend it was kind of you know obviously i'm elk hunting but i kind of used it as like a little scouting trip because mike wasn't uh coming out that weekend with me and i didn't see jack crap i was like oh dang <laughs> another elk season where we're just not going to yeah, see yeah. anything and i was just like come on uh mike hasn't actually really seen elk I've seen like a butt right but he haven't really been oh, able yeah. to like pursue an elk like you, you've never really been able to like pull your bow back or potentially pull your bow back yeah. on an elk All so here so the very first season I took Mike out elk hunting. We didn't even see an elk butt. We didn't see tracks. We didn't see poop unless it was like crusted over. looked like 
<laughs> yeah, it was like months old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just super <laughs> old. Um, but that was not the case on this elk hunt. So my first weekend, nothing was going on. It was super hot, but weather was starting to come in. I would say um, the season where, well, actually, I'd say when Mike, when we're able to hunt, we were hoping just for Saturday. Um, just Saturday? To start. To start. Yeah. So I took Friday off. Mike had a dental appointment on Friday. I thought he his appointment started at 3.30. What? As no, oh Thursday. man, my days are all messed yeah. up. Yeah, it was it was Thursday. It was Thursday. It was Thursday. So I took off Thursday. Well, not Friday. I took off Thursday. Was it Thursday or Wednesday? It was Wednesday. It was my appointment. So, Wednesday. So Friday. Were, so I was actually off on Wednesday. Thir- Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and coming back Sunday. Right. That was, that was the plan. That was the plan. But Mike was done with his dental appointment at three. So we were like, I thought he was going to start it at 3.30. So I wasn't like completely ready, but I was like, oh, dang, you're ready to go now? Threw everything in the truck, picked Mike up, and I was like, get your camo on. We're hunting. He was like, what? I was like, yeah, dude, we're hunting tonight. Yeah, I didn't even bring shower shoes because of that. (laughs) (laughs) And he was like, all right, cool. So we grabbed everything. We head out, and we know that when we get out there, um, depending on traffic, we actually didn't even know when we were going to show up because we're like, man, if we only have like an hour, let's just get in there and see if we can locate a bull bugling or something. Well, we had a few hours. We get out there, didn't take too long to get out there. And, um, we jumped on the mountain bikes and we, we headed out to the, to, uh, an area that we wanted to check out. We get in there, we're kind of tootling around. And then Mike swears he heard a bugle. I, for some reason, was deaf on this trip because I didn't hear mo- anything. Yeah, I've heard like, I heard the bugle a few times, and you're like, what? Yeah, yeah I was like, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I may have heard something in the distance, but I wasn't quite sure. I, I was just like, ah, I don't know. And he was like, yeah, man, I swear I heard something. And I'm like, all right, cool. Well, let's get set up. I mean, if you heard something I didn't, I'm going to go off your word, even if it was right or wrong. Who, who cares? Let's get set up. Let's, you know. Hopefully this bull comes in. We, we just don't know. So we get set up. We're waiting there for a while. And usually when, when elk are moving in, even if it comes in silent, some, you might hear something snap. Yeah. A stick, something. We didn't hear anything. So Mike and I kind of, cause we're kind of spread out. So Mike, I, for that, um, hunt, that night hunt, I was just like, Mike, I'm going to call. We're going to see if we can get something in for you. You're just going to be the shooter. I'm going to call and and video. Like that's all I'm going to do. And so we get kind of, um, get back together because I'm back in the distance, kind of calling, trying to bring something in. And I was just like, dude, I haven't heard anything. Let's just, you know, work our way out and, and see if we can get anything on the way out of here. We're walking back and all of a sudden, it seemed like a Mack truck started running through the dang woods. And we're just like, what the heck? We turn around and this big freaking bull runs right by us at like 30 yards. And we're just like, son of a gun. So jumps the road. uh, Yeah. So we're on like an old skitter road. It's like a, it was all grass and moss and everything. Um, And it, and Superman leaped like over the road. We're just like, holy crap. Yeah. Because uh, if, if we could have got it to stop, Mike would have had a shot. Um, it was a legal bull. It was probably a 4x5 four or a 4x4 four four bull. Um, night, it was a nice big bull. Like The body was massive. The body was huge. Um, the antlers, a little bit small, but we're not eating the antlers. We're there for the meat. And we're in a three-pointer better only area. So we can't shoot spikes, cows, only three-pointer better bulls. And that means it has to have three points on one side um, bef- before it's legal. So it could actually be like a three by one, but it has to have three points on one side, not three um, together, three on one side. So uh, that bull takes off running. Uh, I think it saw us. Um, I, I'm, I don't know how we didn't see this thing. Um, I, I don't know. We it just went running by us. The scent was, the scent was going the opposite way. So I'm thinking that it it saw us walking, um, 
walking out. But there are more elk coming down. So you could hear them kind of like um, moseying through. They weren't actually that far up the hill. What would you 55 yards, if that? Oh, 40? Dude. Yeah, it'll probably when be we like, come, call him, caught him kind of like going, going through the trees. Like if you aim up, like if you're going to shoot up, there'll probably be like 35 or 40 up. Yeah, like it didn't seem like it was super far away. No. Like if it was open and there was something legal in there, we would have been able to shoot. Yeah. Uh, but it wasn't. It was like, nah, you couldn't see through it. You could barely see the bodies kind of moving through. Yeah. Um, like when I looked up, because we, we heard it and I looked up and I saw couple of brown things just walking and then they stopped and one i was just staring at like a brown butt for the longest time and i could see its <laughs> tail like <laughs> wagging i'm like um, there's something up there and i didn't i didn't see what it was but i'm like there's something oh, up so there. mike i'm telling michael hey man let's just get ready um so we kind of we drop down to our knees i scoop kind of back mike's kind of he's ready to go so we're just trying to get his body angle right because they're moving in. Mike's aimed the opposite way of where I could see them because he's kind of like trying not to make eye contact, but just still kind of watching them. So he got m- focused on one, but they're more like moving down. So I was like, Mike, you got to turn your body because they're going to come out almost where that bull popped out. Yeah. So he's ready to go. And then all of a sudden, boom, one comes out and we're like, oh, heck yeah. And I'm like, Mike, it's a spike. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> okay. So we're just waiting. And man, that, that thing stayed there. Dude, it seemed like it was there for like an hour. Yeah, it was just sitting there, just staring broadside, just looking at us. <laughs> <If we're, laughs> I didn't know what was going on. In my mind, because um, one of the cameras that I was using is a, um, Insta360. Uh, I just got it this year. I already dropped it and messed up one of the lenses, but still works good works fine uh, and i'm i'm filming the whole thing and i'm just like in my mind i'm like why couldn't that be a bull <laughs> like a legal bull it's a bull but a legal bull yeah. like why couldn't that have been like the usually like a smaller bull will have like another bigger bull with it sometimes uh depending on um if, if they're hurting up and it right during that time they weren't um they weren't really hurting up they're we'd find a couple bulls that had like small herds, but not like they weren't really herding up yet. So sometimes when that's happening, you might find another bigger bull with a small bull. So we're like a little satellite bull. Uh, in our case, that didn't happen. So yeah. this, this spike, my Mike, man, he, uh, this guy is going to, he hasn't filled a tag yet, but from his demeanor, from me watching from behind him, he didn't like get into like some weird um, breathing rhythm. Like I couldn't tell if you were like breathing or I don't know if you could hear your heart in your ears. Like I didn't I, know, like I didn't do anything. I was just normal. Yeah. Where he was at. So with that being said, you know, this dude's going to be freaking awesome, uh, a hunter. Uh, but we weren't, <sighs> we weren't able to get his tag filled. So, that bull walks off. We know that there's still more elk coming down. Two more spike bulls walk out. Two more spike bulls. So we have four bulls, one shooter that thought it was Superman. Um, couldn't get a shot on that one. And then three more spikes come out. And we are not even, what, an hour and 40 minutes into our hunt. Yeah. This is the very first night of us hunting this area and just we were just like holy smokes we can't believe that this is happening uh and we haven't really had a hunt like that since the first time you were out deer hunting yeah well we saw like everything in the woods yeah so we were out deer hunting we saw you know a bunch of does we saw a bear we saw a bull elk all within like uh, seven minutes <laughs> I know. <laughs> um only then, thing we didn't saw is a cougar that was lived in there somewhere <laughs> <laughs> which we saw the next year yeah. um but yeah so it w- it was just make sure this thing is still going <laughs> so it was just uh, uh an awesome experience within you know two hours of this hunt uh, when we have like four or five days of this hunt so we didn't really call anymore. Uh, we didn't really try to bring that bull up because we can hear that they ran down to the bottom and that 
and towards the bottom there's a, a, a creek bottom and we didn't really hear them go across but they were definitely down in that creek bottom and then they can pretty much go anywhere from the creek bottom they can they can really just disappear so i was like you know what let's back out we know where there's elk let's get out of here and we'll come right back here in the morning and, and see what what we can do if this bull comes back if we can turn something up let's just back out of here and then head back so um we were staying with two other of of our buddies um the other host of the show uh david sandana and our friend luke from tennessee uh we were all camping together and we <laughs> got into camp and we're telling them the story and they're just like oh no way man and they had already been there for like the whole week so i was camping with them the weekend before and I was just, you know, like, crap, man, this might not turn out to be like the best hunt because I was in there for two days, yeah. 18 hour days and didn't see or hear anything. Um, but there was, there was sign, there was, there was new sign and oh, yeah, uh, plenty of poop. Yeah. I was pretty confident that we were going to run into something, but we needed the weather to change and it did. And it got really cool in the mornings. It happened to be like fairly nice during the day. But we were seeing elk all, all times of the day. But uh, so we tell them the story like, yeah, man, we Mike almost got it done on the first day. And they're like, what the heck? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, they're like, so you guys are going to be in there the whole time? And I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah. I think we found our spot. Um, I think we're going to connect on something hopefully soon. Hopefully yeah. soon. Uh, um, uh, the other area that I've that I've hunted before, I shot my first bull, my only bull. Um, it's kind of give or take like some years, uh, you're on elk every day or every other day. And other times you don't see jack crap. And that was Mike's first elk season three years ago. Now, three seasons ago, yeah. um, we didn't see anything. And then the year, bef the year after that, um, I ended up buying a pass to go into a place and, and Mike hunted this spot. We call the secret squirrel spot. That was last year, the year before yeah. we both went in. Yeah, and we didn't see anything. Yeah, didn't and see then anything. last year, you we that hunted, we hunted, bike. yeah, <laughs> yeah, we hunted uh, separately. And then this year, we we got back together again to hunt for the elk season. And bam, man, we're on elk. So day two, day two, we come in, and we went we went down to the end of the row where we saw where we found that creek, one one side of the creek. Oh. Oh, okay. That's on day two. So, day, yeah, so day two, because we didn't go down to the bottom, right? Yeah, we just went to it and came and started coming back Coming up. back, yeah. Um, we're like, oh, let's cross this creek, you know? Let's see what's over here. Um, looking on our uh, Onyx maps, we use Onyx maps on on the cell phone. Just like, this looks fairly flat. We're by water. There's nice cover. Let's go cross this creek and just see what's over there. Yeah. We've never really hunted in, in this area. So we we head over. I do a couple calls, and all of a sudden, you hear this cow call. is meh, like off in the distance. And I was like, oh, crap, man. We might be underneath the herd. Yeah. And then I'd call, and it would call back. I'm just like, dude, I really don't ever get cows that respond back to, like, a, another cow cow call really yeah not not normally <laughs> um it does happen obviously and we were using the easy sucker at that yes we were we were using the phelps easy sucker man if you guys have a hard time with a diaphragm i really recommend checking out um, phelps game calls and using the easy sucker uh, we will there is on all of our videos we have a uh, discount code ten percent off your your Phelps uh, at check checkout. You're going to save ten percent. Uh, the code will be down in the description, but you should check that out for sure because yeah. it, it's an easy easy to use call. I mean, it's called the easy sucker for a reason. All you do is just bite your teeth down and suck in. You're going to make cow noise. <laughs> it's that simple. Yeah, and it's good for like right now. I have Invisalign, and I can't really use a diaphragm because it messes. The Visalign messes with how like it whole, sits. Yeah, how it even sits. Like in the Visalign comes up, and it just yeah, it feels weird when it's inside of the mouth because I got like then I'll have three things inside of my mouth <laughs> instead of just one. <laughs> it, and there you go. And I always and, and I already easy. start drilling enough with <laughs> with my Invisalign in, 
So it'll just be, get all slimy, slimy and, and stuff. <laughs> and now I have to take it out and have it dry off a little bit. And so I just use DC suck. <laughs> and, it, and it works. It really, truly works. Um, you guys can check out a couple other videos. Mike's actually using the easy sucker. We call in a bull. We're actually out bear hunting and uh, in that area. And a bull started sounding off. And Mike, I was like, dude, you got any elk calls? And he's like, yeah, me use that thing. Prah, freaking dinosaur goes off. Yeah. Um, I was talking with that. <laughs> that could have been uh, one of the bulls. So the weekend before I met a guy, um, Sam, I call him red beard, big old tall dude, six foot three giant. Um, awesome guy. Awesome guy. I met him just on the road passing. He was coming in and I was coming out and, uh, he was like, Hey, uh, I think I may have just killed a bull. You want to help me locate it? And I was like, heck yeah, dude. Like he's a solo hunter. I was solo hunting at the time. I was like, man, it's kind of stink to pull that thing out on your own. Uh, I'll help you and I'll, I'll help you, uh, get the bull out of here and everything. And he's like, Oh man, that's awesome. So Sam, if you're uh, watching or listening, uh, it was awesome to meet you and hopefully we'll, uh, uh, keep in touch. We did exchange numbers. So, uh, we do both hunt the same areas. I actually ran into him a year or two ago in the, in the late season. And, uh, that's kind of, he was like, Oh, Hey, you're the guy with the podcast. And yeah. Um, but anyways, he shot a bull that weekend. We didn't locate it. Um, there was no blood, but I think he may have killed that bull. Uh, very last day of elk season, he sends me a text and bam, there's a bull on the ground and I, I'll, I'll post it up so you guys can see that, but it, it's a nice bull, uh, Roosevelt bull. But, um, yeah, so we're across the Creek, you know, yeah. we're calling, cow calling and all of a sudden boom this cow comes down it comes like she was came in like hopping yeah oh yeah she was excited she was like oh my gosh there's another lady over here hey i know that's basically <laughs> it's yeah. kind of like a dog when the dog like hops in then it just stops and like looks start looking around it's exactly uh, oh yeah it was like okay like this is where i think i heard this noise where is it and uh, if anybody's had elk come in, they'll, they'll do that. A bull will kind of do that, sniff the air, you know, pee all over himself, make some crazy, you know, start bugling and stuff and trying to locate like, Hey, where, where the heck are you? Um, this one did that too, but it was on the other side of the, of the creek bottom. Yeah. And got great video of it just walking around doing its thing. And then it kind of just moseys on out and trots back up this hill. And I'm like, usually, when something like this happens, Mike, that is a part that is like the pawn of the herd. Sometimes they'll send a cow down to go and check it out. And then the rest of the herd might come down or if they don't see anything, they'll come back up, you know, and it, it's time to play the game. Well, that did not happen. So the cow goes up, you can hear him chirping and in and, and it, seemed like or calling um it seemed like there's more than one up there so like okay let's you know take a second let's eat let them do their thing um we ate we start we get up we move over a little bit and i start calling again and that cow or what i thought was the same cow yeah i think it was, was calling one. again but this time it freaking ran across the, the creek and we're like oh heck yeah maybe they're gonna bring more over yeah. Nope. It, it wasn't a slow crossing either. It was like it like bull rushed through that. Oh yeah, water. it was loud. It was super. I wish I had the camera on to see it kind of like go through the water like that because it just boo whoosh. And I'm not sure if it had hoof rod or not, but it, when it came or through there, I'm not sure if it <laughs> tripped because uh, we didn't see it cross the water. I'm not sure if it tripped over or something and messed up its 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 foot, but it was kind of limping a little bit. Um, I didn't see any deformations on, on the leg itself or on the hoof. Cause I could see it perfectly. It was perfectly walking through broadside kind of doing its thing. I mean, uh, I don't know yeah. how long. If it was antlerless, like it was like a few years ago, we would have been done on the second day. <laughs> we would have been done on the second day. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> on the first the third day. <laughs> uh, we had a couple times uh, encounters with, with, with cows and, and whatnot. I mean, if it was any elk, we would have been done in the first hour and a half. Um, 
on on two spikes yeah. but uh you know it was a three-pointer better but yeah the last year i think in that area it was three-pointer better or antlerless i think i know it was for sure during late season um, but i didn't look early season because it was on fire so i was like yeah. okay i gotta change my mindset and go somewhere else um I'm pretty sure it was antlerless or yeah, antlerless and three pointer better. Uh, but this year it was just three pointer better. And it, I guess they used to go through these cycles back before I started hunting. It was like every three to five years, they would change the rules. Um, and I think they're kind of back on that cycle again. So we yeah. might not see the rules change again for another five years. So um, it's going to be, you know, trying to get down a bull. I mean, you're when you're elk hunting, the coolest thing about an early archery hunt is is the bulls bugling. So you're trying to get a bull anyways, but sometimes, you know, a cow might walk in, could, you know, it's like, hey, I got a cow at 20 yards broadside, like, okay, bam, taking it, filling my tag. But, yeah. you know, um, things change. And now it's three-pointer better. So now our focus is just bulls, crushing bulls. Like, that's that's the goal. Um, so when it comes to late season, late season again is going to be three point or better. Um, we, we, we know where we're going, but, uh, yeah. So the f- second day we had two separate cows come in cause the first one was definitely healthy. It wasn't, uh, limping around or nothing. Um, unless this one like tripped and fell and, and hurt itself going across the river because, or the, the Creek bottom or whatever, because it was it just thrashed yeah, through the water. It thrashed through it. It was, it was super loud. Got they got some good film of both those cows, uh, or the one single cow got good footage of that. Um, and then for the rest of the day, we didn't really see jack crap. It was just those two cows were kind of tootling around. It did get warm that day. Um, it also rained that day, didn't it? Was that the day that we I think that was day three? Oh, yeah, day three was when it rained a little bit. So, wait, was that day four? No, day three we, we went up because we went up to get your camera. That was on day three, right? Yeah. Then as we were coming back, we're like, oh, let's just check this area out. And, and then that's, that's when, when we heard the bugling. Yeah. So day three. So Meanwhile. starting at day three, it didn't really matter. I mean, nothing happened all day long. So we we're just like, we, we went back to where we were seeing elk. Nothing was going on. And I had set out a camera actually a week before we were actually bear hunting. Two weeks before, <laughs> I forgot to turn the camera on. Oh, rookie mistake. Whoops. Um, <laughs> so the, the weekend uh, that I went by myself, I checked it and I was like, oh crap, I didn't turn it on. Um, turned it on. And then, um, so it had soaked for like five or six days. So that was a, the plan on day three, since we, nothing was going on. It was like, Hey, let's go back in the way back and see if there's anything on the camera. Go and grab that thing and nothing's on the camera i um so my camera has a a screen in the inside i don't have one of the cell ones but has a screen on the inside and you can just check all the all the video i have mine just on video um and there was nothing on there um it got a lot of just branches moving and and whatnot so anytime the wind would blow stuff (laughs) (laughs) it would turn on so i had like 400 and something videos of just like sticks moving um nothing came came through there but i mean whatever we knew that where the elk were it's just we went back to go and check the camera nothing was on it so we're just like hey uh let's kind of tootle around i wanted to show mike this this area that i kind of found that we usually don't really walk into um it was kind of like this nice flat meadow area and it was littered with elk sign the weekend before uh to be honest that like right below that is where uh redbeard shot his bull uh the weekend that i was in there and i didn't even hear anything it was uh, so weird and they were probably four or 500 yards away. Um, not, they weren't super far. They were just at the creek bottom and I was up on this, this flat, uh, plateau kind of area. And they were like down to the creek bottom and then kind of like three or 400 yards in from there where he shot the bull. 
And I only know that because where we're like tracking to find this bull, I brought up my on X and I was like, dude, I was like right up there. <laughs> it was like, what? <laughs> so it was just kind of a weird, weird scenario of like what happened. But so we grabbed the camera, nothing's going on. We have to hike our butts out of this area and it's a pain in the butt, um, especially when it's warm. So late season, that's the area that we need to be in, but it's cool. The, the bike ride in is not bad and the hike out, you're just kind of like, I need to get warm. <laughs> so it's like not that bad. Yeah. Um, but, uh, when it's, when it was fairly warm and I mean, it wasn't even that warm really. What it was 70, it was, like, it was like 70 something. Yeah. It was like low seventies. Yeah. But oh my gosh, it seemed like it was 300. Yeah, I was like, when you get into the shade, you're like, ah, oh, it's all right. Then when you hit the sun is Yeah, I was like, there's up. no way it's 70-something degrees. <laughs> like, the sun feels like it's 9,000. But, uh, yeah, so we're hiking out, and we're almost just going to be like, oh, crap, man. We're not seeing or hearing anything. Let's just call it a day, and then yeah, we're, we're going to go home and strategize. Yeah, and just hang out, you know, and eat food. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> we, we uh, are on our way out, and... Well, actually, before that, Mike and I were kind of looking at where we're locating these elk. And I was like, dude, what what about these two roads here? Out of these two roads, which one would you go down? He was like, man, I'd go down this one. Like, all right, let's go check it out. So, I mean, we're already going to be heading out of here. It makes no difference to go and check out this this area. So we were biking back and we go down, go down this other area and on our way down, well, I'm actually doing like some, um, like vlogging floating head stuff, you know, like talking to the camera and all of a sudden we just hear this, I, I pretty much just shut the camera off and I was like, all right, man, let's turn around and get out of here. And then all of a sudden freaking, wow, this freaking bullet goes off and we're just like, Oh my gosh, everything yeah. just changed. <laughs> it, it was a huge, uh, echo area. Like it seemed like it would it the sound traveled further down that road than any other. Yeah, so I noticed that like the elevation change was drastic. It was so the couple other um, areas that we were going to it was like that gradual kind of slope yeah. down. This one had like deep down, gradual, deep down, like down to the creek. And bottom. it wasn't like close like all the other areas had close hills next to it this one was more like the hills were further apart as we were going down yeah yeah and it oh man it got steep um yeah when we we started working towards the end yeah Yeah. (laughs) um so we're calling this so we located a bull or it it sounded off we didn't really locate nothing it did it on its own we happened to be in the right area at the right time game on Right. We hear this bull bugling. It was basically the first real loud bugle that we both heard because Mike heard the first one, which I still don't understand how he heard that thing. <laughs> uh, but this was years before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but this one was definitely a big bull and it was, it was go time. So uh, we, we, you know, start heading down to the bottom. We get to the end of the road and it's just like, <sighs> very hard it's hard to explain without actually showing you guys but like the branches and sticks and trees and everything you're looking through just put your fingers together and try to look and try to look through them right it's just if 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 sticks were to make spider webs that's what it kind of looked like yeah that's what we're trying to like find this oak through underbrush growth yeah, and, and, and it was reprod as well. So um, what reprod is, is like when they, they clear an area, they will replant trees. Um, and these ones probably were eight, eight to 10 years. I wouldn't even say that. Probably anywhere from like five to seven year old, like reprod. So it was like, there are probably 10 to 12 foot tall and and just in your face like stacked in into each other to where you had to like you have to push through to get through this stuff and and we're trying to find game trails and finally like when you're like 30 
to 40 feet in, it kind of clears up. You can kind of make out where a trail was, but we were trying to call this bull up out of the creek bottom because we knew exactly where he was. It was like, dude, he is calling from the creek bottom. Like he's in the creek bottom. Yeah. We're either going to have to call him up or we're going to have to go after his ass. So we sat and called. He wasn't moving after calling. Yeah, I wasn't, I don't think, I wasn't trying to be super aggressive with my calls. Uh, I don't think I bugled. No. Um, well, you bugled like once. I think I bugled once when I was up at the top. Yeah. But Cal called on our way down. And then we're going in there. This bull is getting closer. We're getting closer. And then all of a sudden... You feel the wind hit the back of your freaking neck. And we're just kind of like, we both kind of looked at each other. And I knew Mike felt it too because he kind of looked at me and I looked at him and we're kind of both like, book. (laughs) 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 So (laughs) we're like, damn it, busted. Because right after that, the elk made the weirdest noise. It wasn't a chuckle. It wasn't like a, so a, when a when a it kind of sounded like a gorilla noise. So it was like a chuckle. So a, a bull will make this noise after it bugles, or sometimes it'll just it'll make this noise, and it's a chuckle, and it's like a ooh 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 ooh. It will sound better with a with a mouth read in there, but he kind of did like a uh like a I, I can't even make the noise. Um, it, it was like a chuckle, but it was a different tone from the chuckle and I was like deeper. Yeah. And, and that basically meant I'm grabbing my, my girls and I'm out because as we are starting to get closer, you can kind of hear the, the, um, cow calls. You can kind of just hear them kind of like talking kind of back and forth. And this bull was trying to figure us out. It was trying to wind us, but the wind was super in our favor. It was blowing straight up the hill there. The bull would have had to come all the way around, but if he would have came around, we would have saw him because he would have had to come out of the creek bottom. So he moved up to our left. And then when the wind changed, he ran down and out to our right and, and, and he was gone. Yeah. Um, he basically moved with the creek bottom because we didn't hear nothing as he was out. Yeah. And we kind of went down, down and looked in there and it was the area that we were in was kind of dried up. Um, well, um, there was no creek bottom. There was no water down there. Yeah. It was nice and soft. It looked primo elk creek bottom area. It was awesome. And we kind of saw like a place where they probably were. It was all beat up. Yeah. It was all beat up. I, I guarantee it was probably him and a few cows uh, and probably cows that we hadn't even seen. Um, but that is the bull that Sam shot. Oh, really? Yeah. I think that was the... I, I'm almost guaranteed because he was like, oh, yeah, I had like three or four cows with it, but it wasn't the bull that he that he boogered up on. Oh, okay. So... The, it was a different bull. It's a different one. Yeah. Uh, it was smaller. It was a smaller bull. The bull that he shot was freaking huge. Oh, okay. Like how he was explaining it and how big sam is like he was like oh dude he was like this and big old five by five bases <laughs> like huge <laughs> like holy crap um this one was a five by four it wasn't the bull that we saw jump the road though yeah exactly Comple- the, just the antlers were completely different uh well the antlers were different yeah that's true um but yeah so we had that experience and that was really cool because uh, in a hunting scenario, Mike hasn't been in that yet. He hasn't heard the, the, the bugles from a bull in a hunting scenario. He got it the weekend, a uh, couple weekends prior, but we couldn't hunt. Yeah. So we we're just playing that around with the bull. like super close when we were that, And that was a monster. Yeah. That was an absolute monster. Um, that was the one that Sam shot at. Yeah. It was like when we were, when we were just messing with them, I swear he was like, probably since we couldn't really see much like down 20, into the he was creek. like 25 yards deep. yeah he was probably just like right below us i caught him running i oh yeah, yeah i run him out yeah running out it's like oh my gosh <laughs> he was huge um but yeah so so day three we run into this bull and it was it was an awesome experience um it sucks that the wind switched 
right at the end too because i'm i'm checking it i'm checking it as we're moving and the wind is just going up this hill up this hill up this hill and all of a sudden boom changed yeah and there's i mean there's not a whole lot you can do when when the wind changes like that and you know it's the end of the day we're probably smelling <laughs> i mean uh, there's nothing that you can do and it, it was just kind of kind of cool that you know my cat went through that experience i hope next time uh, we we call a bull in and and it's game over yeah but you know day four we're going to day four so actually we uh, that night you know we we're we're telling our 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 stories and these guys are like, yeah, right, yeah, right. And I'm like, do you want me to bring the camera out? I mean, I got this guy freaking going nuts. <laughs> I have video proof. <laughs> like, There's video yeah. evidence of this. And uh, they're just like, holy crap, that's cool. And then, um, you know, before that, I was showing them, like, the, the spike that walked in and all this other stuff and the cows. And they're just like, holy crap, man, you guys have been on elk every day. And I'm like, yeah, I told you <laughs> like, this is the spot, but uh, they're also on elk too. So it'd be good to um, get Dave's perspective on, on how their hunt went too. And, yeah. and kind of just ask them questions like, dude, like how was it, you know, like what was the scenario? Um, I know like, I'm playing some of these things through my head like over and over and over again. And it's really just the first two hours of the first day are going through my head. Yeah. Like, what did we do wrong? We weren't patient enough. That was the only thing that I'm getting out of that whole experience is that we weren't patient enough. Yeah, and it's did. more or less my patience. Not really yours. It was mine. It was my call to walk out of there. Yeah. It was my call to walk out. Because I wasn't hearing anything, number one. I didn't hear the call. So I'm also not, I didn't know if it was like, did he really hear a bugle? You know, yeah. like, you know, you hear so many different things in the woods. Like, was that really a bugle? Could have been like, a, you know, a, and we were a weird bird we were or whatever. posted up when we were do listening to trying to get something down. We were actually posted up on the right, the good side, because when they were, we're posting up on the side that they were coming down at. Yep. So they would have came down and looking uphill probably or straight ahead. And we would have just been right there freaking to pluck. Yeah. I think it would have been a little bit further of a shot. Um, but also we spooked that bull. So we don't really know where he was going to pop out at. Yeah. All we know is that all the other bulls but he followed did, him out. He did pop out on a known trail because we saw the trail as yeah. we were walking down the next day. We we're like, oh, this is yep. a trail going up. Yeah, so it was more or less my patience. So for me, I need to be a little bit more patient on on all this. Um, I, I, I mean, I've been elk hunting long enough to where I should know this. It hasn't been that long, but... It, should know like but you know where we are fighting against time getting dark or whatever yeah but we had we still had time we had time we have headlamps like we yeah. could have walked out of there in the dark no big deal but if i would have just heard a stick snap or something <laughs> like it would have been <laughs> yeah. like for sure evidence of like oh man there's elk in the woods yeah um but there wasn't anything so it was just kind of one of those things that just plays over and over in my head um but yeah day four day four was um i wouldn't say it was like the most exciting day it was probably the weirdest weather day that was the day it was raining kind of off and on that was the day that, so that day and we did we like checked a new road. The road that was like right below. Was it below or right, right below the yeah, right where below. we truck the yeah. truck. Well, it was it was so there's a couple areas, um, and we're just like, man, well, let's just we're gonna go to one of these close roads. We call it the the Y road. We we when I was like, dude, this road goes goes forever, and it's an old skitter road, so it's not like a it's not a road. Um, the gated area. It's not you can't order pizza and say bring it to me here yeah. <laughs> um it was all grassied up anyway yeah. it's been a while since stuff been down there <laughs> um but we followed this thing all the way down and we and we run into two cows again and i think it's the same two cows so it was kind of like this weird pattern so you'd see these two cows and then you know next day you'd see bulls see these two cows the next day you're on bulls see these two cows the next day you're on bulls so it was just kind of like mathematically it's like oh man maybe the next day we might see some bulls 
well, we didn't hunt the next day. Uh, we we decided that that night because we didn't hear anything we didn't on hear, the fourth day. No, we didn't, and we we just ran into these 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 two cows, but they they kept on getting they kept on going the opposite way of where we thought they were going. They're getting yeah. closer to the truck, basically. Yeah, it's like they're doing their loop. So, so how I know this? Um, so we 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 work this area all day long. I'm talking from dark to dark. We work this area all day long, and that night we're kind of like, all right. So, do we go in for like a morning hunt and then and then just check out, or do we get everything ready to go and just just you know call it sleep in and. Yeah. <laughs> yeah we we decided to sleep in yeah. and we called it um now sam i kind of told him like the area that we're kind of in and 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 because he we we're sharing information like pretty much every night we we're texting when when he would leave or whatever and and I, um we'd kind of touch base like uh, in the morning at some point because uh, the service is fairly spotty yeah, cause he's hunting alone. And I, I told him like, Hey man, if you get something down, let me know. I can, I can, uh, try to help you out while I'm out here. And then, uh, Mike as well, it would have been his first pack out, which would have been freaking awesome. Um, cause our whole motto was like, uh, you know, heavy packs, sore backs, you know, that was <laughs> like, that was like w what we wanted. And, uh, it would, it would be nice to help out a fellow hunter um, that's out there, especially on their own, or if, if they would have been in a group, it wouldn't have mattered. I mean, the camaraderie there, uh, you always help out your fellow hunter. That's just, that's just a rule for me. That's a rule for me. Cause if I was out there alone and if, you know, so if someone was nice enough to help me, uh, that, that goes a long ways. But, uh, Sam calls me, it's the last day. I don't know what this dude does for work. So I think he was out there every single day. Yeah. Every day I was, was out always there. He like was in the there. morning till like one o'clock. And then he, yeah. Down. And then he was gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was like, I didn't see or hear anything. I'm out of here. Um, but he was able to, uh, shoot that bull the last day. And it was the first or second road right next to the, where the gate gates at. And I was just like, you gotta be freaking kidding me, dude. <laughs> I was like, Holy crap. He was like, yeah, man, it, it, uh, he was like, I was getting ready, and I heard a bugle, and I just went down and shot him. <laughs> I was like, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, he put in his time. He was there from, from freaking day one to the last day. Yeah. So, I mean, he put in the work. He put in the, 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 the boot time. Like, he was in there every day grinding and, and – uh, Red beard, man, you did it. That's awesome, dude. I wish I would have been able to jump out of work and, and come help you pack out, but you know, I, daddy's got to pay the bills, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I couldn't come out and help, but if, if I would have been in a situation to come out and help, I definitely was because he was like, hey, man, bull down. He's like, you got that extra pack? <laughs> I'm like, dude, I'm uh, I, I'm at work, man. There's no way I can get out of there. Um, but, uh, yeah, that I, I thought that was really cool. So, yeah, man. So from this elk hunt, Mike, what would you, what would you take away from it? Like where, what was the successes and then like, like your, your takeaway and then like what, what sucked if there is anything that, that, well, I mean, obviously what sucked is we didn't feel a tag, but other yeah. than that sucked and, uh, going deep. <laughs> no, like, oh shoot. Yeah. But uh, the takeaway is, I would say, like, more more patience, scoping out an area and just kind of sitting at it. Because we had, like, once we got to the frontal area, it was, we got on a lot of stuff, but I don't think we, uh, we could have sat probably longer in uh, certain areas. Yeah, and uh, I, I agree with that. Another thing is the uh, taken away is most all the basically like all the times that we saw something or sat down that we could shoot something, 
we were going to a place, not at the place we were going to. It was more like walking. Like the noise from walking actually, I would think, helped us out because they thought other stuff was walking. So they got <laughs> close to us. <laughs> because it's like. That is true, man. Well, except for the bull bugling, that one, I think that that just happened. Yeah, that just happened. That, but that like just happened, seeing but those cows and seeing the, the bulls. bulls, it's like we were just walking. So they're probably like, oh, there's other stuff around here. And they just wanted to check <laughs> it out. Until they were like, wait, those things are standing straight up. I know. <laughs> what the heck is those that? Those are the two legs. <laughs> <laughs> so it's more of that. But yeah, the sucky things are is we didn't feel anything. I almost filled a, a deer tag. But it was just looking straight at me, and I wasn't confident enough My, to yeah, shoot Mike's it not, right into the right below the collarbone. Yeah, Mike's not comfortable and with if you the like, frontal now, shot, which is okay. Now that I like thought about it, do you know if I did shoot that? You probably would have shot through the back of my head. It was like <laughs> I would have shot, and it was like literally like probably six inches. It was breeze like right past your left ear. Um, that's how uh, close it well, would have been. So um, we were okay. We that was on the fourth day. Yeah, that was the last day. We didn't really tell that story. Um, we're walking down this area and we see a, a doe, and it's any deer in that area. So Mike could have filled his tag. We stop. I'm trying to range it, but I can't because there's a bunch of stuff in front of me. And uh, uh, Mike's behind me. But he didn't say that if he was drawing or not, because I would have just ducked. <laughs> well, because you said shoot it, and I'm like, can you range it? Because well, I was just I didn't, sitting there. For I didn't a while. know where you were, so yeah. I thought you would step past me. I did right when I was about to draw when it turned towards us. Yeah, and then the, I was I was slowly like bending down. Yeah, because at first I'm frozen because I'm trying not to move because I don't think it sees Mike because we're kind of like in line together. So usually when you're in line together, they'll lock eyes with something. And then the second guy can kind of get away with like moving because they're locked eyes with you and they can kind of, and how it was, it was like, it was up on top of this berm and like back on this other, like, um, like a road that curved. Yeah. That curved up. So I can't really see Mike. And I know that I have to like get out of the way because he's either right behind me or he's making his way across to where the deer can't really see it so i know i need to get out of the way so i wasn't in any harm but if <laughs> mike was just to yeah. be right behind me and pull and pull the bow back which would never happen we we yeah. know we know freaking safety um yeah yeah because i i went back enough and right when you said just shoot it it turned toward us and i was about to just be like screw it yeah and at that what, time mike's already like yeah and i uh, didn't know over. what the yards was but it looked like 35 ish to me so i was just gonna yeah you, i was just so gonna, i read i read um because the deer ended up walking away um i went up there to try, try to, to get it to come to back, back down, down towards mike but i got up there i think it probably just went into where i couldn't see it and laid down to be honest with you because it didn't go anywhere i didn't because there's yeah I so there's hear. another y up there so y is off again and nothing went off to the other way and nothing came down to you. So I think it walked in and just laid down where we couldn't see it. Cause it, I mean, the brush, brush was so thick. Yeah. And I'm like, I was just going to pull back at 35 and just Jesus take the wheel at it. No, nah, you would have nailed it. And right when I was about to like move my arm to pull back, if we're going whoop, and it just went right, went in the right bushes. into the bush. Yeah. So I was like, damn it. Yeah. <laughs> no, don't worry, guys. I wasn't going to get shot in the back of the head. Mike was like three feet off to my right. Yeah. <laughs> and I was kind of like ducking out of the way. Um, but yeah, so, well, I guess my takeaway, kind of mirroring you, man, is, is being a little bit more patient. I thought we were more patient as the longer days came. Yeah. Because we were just kind of sitting in areas. Yeah. Like, there was I think time. I won like eight Super Bowls on my. Um, my okay. football app, my football game on my, on my phone. Yeah, the fourth day we sat, we sat on that hill for a while where we saw the cows. Yeah, we were up. So we, but then it, we sorry, kind it of got moved kind of out like of the super windy. 
Like it was yeah. getting windy when we were sitting there. Yeah, it did. It, it got it got crazy windy. But yeah, my takeaway would be a little bit more patient in when when you actually hear something, right? Like regardless if I heard the bugle or not, you you said that you heard a bugle. I need to have better judgment in you that you heard it. Yeah. Right. I know that you're a new hunter, but you know what a bugle sounds like. The funny thing is I don't listen. I've noticed I don't listen to the beginning part of the bugle. It's always that last end, part, the last end part of, cause it's really distinct. That part of the bugle is really distinct. So it's like the other part can be like, some wind or some cracking or something but then that high pitch kind of like sharp end that's what i listen to because you don't hear a sharp end just in nature it's, something's making that noise so that's what most of the time i that's what it. you're t that's what that's you're my, tuning in yeah that's what my ears catch most of the time is that sharp end of the call hmm i don't know if i've actually like diagnose like what i what i am actually like hearing because i never i never hear the beginning part all the bugles that we've heard i've always heard the end sharp it's just it goes up and this just ends and that's the part that i always hear <laughs> unless if it's like super close to us and right then the you're hearing thing. the bark and all that other yeah crap. like the, i'm not like the not like a bull bark but like the growliness of a of a bull like is very distinct in the first part of it. And that's, you can almost kind of judge how big a bull is or like the, the masculinity of the yeah. bull when it's like got that freaking deep, just dinosaur sound to it. It's, it's very distinct. Like Mike knows what that sounds like. Yeah. It's insane. Um, yeah, man. I don't know if I've like, I need, I, I guess that's something I need to just kind of like sit back and kind of like, Oh, okay. Now that's, that's what Mike's yeah. talking about. So I think that's probably what Mike picked up on, on that very, very first night that I did not hear. Now I could have been doing something to where I didn't hear it. Fiddle farting with the camera. I don't know. Yeah, I didn't hear it. The thing is, it's like, it wasn't the bull that we saw the big, the one that jumped the, the, Road. I mean, it could have been the because that, spike. It was, it was really far away. So it could have been another one. And that bull that jumped the thing was like, oh, that dude probably has some cows. I'm going to go freaking fight him. So that's why he like kind of jumped. Beelined it. Yeah, be, tried could've. to beeline it to it. So I'm like, well, I heard that. So <laughs> Well, I mean, the crashing and everything. Holy smokes, man. That was insane. I wish I would have got that on camera, but we were just kind of, we were just yeah. kind of like, oh, it's time to get the heck out of here. Because if that dude freaking beagled, it would have been like right in oh, our right face. Oh, right in our face. Yeah, that would have been nuts. Um, but yeah, so patience on my part and trusting in, in, in you that you did hear something, right? So it's yeah. just like, okay, we're just going to sit right here. We're going to call until it's freaking pitch black out. And we can't, we can't hunt because it's, we can't see shit. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I need to, my takeaway is being patient in those aspects. Um, other than that, I thought the freaking hunt was awesome. That was really, it it really just, good. you know, obviously the bummer part is we, we didn't feel a tag, but uh you know, some, um, a lot of the time that doesn't freaking happen. Uh, it seems like, that's my MO. <laughs> um, usually I'm not the one feeling tags, but other people are. And, and we got close with Mike. I don't think anybody it just didn't happen. Group no, we, none of us got anything. No one even, no, no one even got a deer. Yeah. Uh, but Dave and Luke were more after um, bucks. They're, they weren't trying to just fill a tag there. They've been hunting for a long time and they've been hunting a long time together. Like I want to say since they were like 13. Yeah, uh, we're there. we're forty three now, so now yeah, so they're just time. trying to get them trophies now instead of oh they're still trying to <laughs> <laughs> they're still trying to put the meat in the freezer, but uh, early yeah. season they're just like oh let's just go after bucks you know late season we'll try to fill the tag with the with the dough or something like that. Yeah. Um, uh, Mike Mike has multi season, but seems like his October is 
is filling up fast so he might not be able to get out rifle season but we still have late season archery for mike yeah, which will still be elk hunting trying too. to do at least one weekend for late or for rifle season well we'll see we'll see what happens man i mean i'll you know i'll be out there but yeah so um yeah my my takeaway is is patience and then um i, I thought the hunt was just awesome we're on elk every single day yeah uh we had you know um that was some the opportunities part. the coolest part was being actually being on them and not just being in a silent woods yeah yeah Hiking well i mean chance. you've now you've had like the lowest of lows where you don't see anything nothing's going on to like the highest of almost the highest of highs yeah. so the highest of highs would be putting one of those bad boys on the ground and notching that tag but we're almost there so you've been to the bottom of the bottom and almost to the tippity top. Yeah, <laughs> so, <we're>, to tippity top. <laughs> so we have to get there like that. It, it's going to happen. I, I can feel it. You know, who knows if it's going to happen this year, but I really do feel like it's going to be in our future here soon. Elk will be on the ground. We will be talking about it. But um, yeah, everybody, thank you for listening. And if you do not follow or subscribe, please do so. Uh, I mean, we're not getting paid to do this you guys we're just we're we're out here just having a good time bringing you like what's going on with us really in, in the woods and uh this the subscriptions and the follows and you know people actually listening comment uh you know let us know what you want to hear about uh we're out here hunting and and, and fishing but you know what what do you guys want to hear about what what experiences or stories that um maybe you might want to be on and, and talk about so leave a comment uh yeah it does go a long ways i do read all of the comments so uh i do respond to all the comments as well so leave a comment and yeah thanks again for listening and yeah, so our next podcast, which we're going to be recording right after this, is uh, uh, listen for that one. It's going to be on what we actually use in the field um, for camera gear. Yeah, from uh, I'm I'm a I'm don't have a whole ton of money, so most of the stuff that I use, anybody can use, and sometimes you might already have it in your pocket. You can. You can film with that. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, all right, everybody, that is it. Thank you for listening. And all of our discounts and all that stuff is going to be in the description. And see you guys all next time. Peace.